and welcome to Fat Squirrel Speaks. Today is March. This is not March yet. It's February 28th. <laughs> this is a bonus episode. So this is not a regular content episode. There will be no actual um, knitting. There are going to be several um, sweaters and projects and things that I've knitted over the years. I'll show examples of each of these yarns. Um, but I, I am going to talk specifically about woolen spun yarns in this episode. And these are the ones that I'm, that I'm going to talk about. This is certainly not all of them that are available. Um, I have not excluded anyone intentionally. <laughs> so if I've not talked about them, I'm not um, saying that they are not quality good yarns. I just haven't knit with them. Or I haven't knit enough with them to feel like I can talk about them. So I want to be clear that this is not an advertisement. I am not endorsed by any of these companies. None of these companies have sent me free stuff. Yeah, I'm double checking. My, that's not entirely true. Harrisville, when I ordered yarn at one point, did send me a sample skein of one of their um, turbine watershed, one of those yarns, but it was just one skein and it was unsolicited. So that did that is that is the only thing I've received for free. So I just want to be very forthright and upfront um, that I am not endorsed by any of these companies. So this bonus episode, it thanks to folks who donate to the podcast um, via my Patreon page or via PayPal directly. Um, and I really appreciate that. And I hope that you all send them out some good vibes and thanks. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, that is how it's made possible. Certainly, if you would like to learn more information about how you can become a patron of the podcast, you can find information um, at patreon.com slash the fat squirrel. Um, or I will put in my Linktree account to the, um, the YouTube drop down. Okay, so I was going to do um, a little roundup on my after party sweater, but I'm not quite done finishing sewing on buttons and blocking button bands. So I thought instead I would do a little bit of a woolen spun recommendation um, video, which I've had requests for in the past. So in this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about all of these yarns, not in this order. Um, the Loft Yarn by Brooklyn Tweed. Wisconsin Woolen Spun by Barrett Wool Company, Beaver Slide Dry Goods by Beaver Slide Dry Goods, <laughs> Shetland, um, Shetland in the Highland by Harrisville, Bartlett Yarns spun by Bartlett Yarns, and then Peace Fleece um, spun by Harrisville. Um, so I'm going to talk about them again, not in that order. So when I talk about each one, there will be a little bit of um, comparison to each other um, because some of them do compare really well like the loft and the wisconsin wool is spun really feel like a very similar yarn different but similar um beaver slide's kind of on its in its own class uh, but shetland peace fleece and bartlett are also like an easy comparison so i will talk about that um, throughout the video and then at the end i'll just do a real brief roundup with all of them again so I guess before I actually start to talk about the yarns, I should very briefly describe what I mean by woolen spun or what is meant by woolen spun. Um, most of your yarns that are available are going to be worsted spun. And the difference is, there's lots of differences. Um, the primary difference is in the act of spinning worsted spun yarns. It means all of the fibers are aligned before they put twist into the yarn, put twist into the fiber to make yarn. In a woolen spun yarn, the fibers are going every which way. They're all over the place before they start to twist them. So the result is that worsted spun yarns are usually denser. So they are going to weigh more, they'll have fewer yards per pound than a woolen spun. Um, typically, they are a little bit more durable than a woolen spun. What else? They typically are going to have a smoother finish, like the yarn itself is less likely to have halo than a woolen spun yarn. And off the top of my head, I think those are the three biggies. Um, a woolen spun yarn is going to be loftier. <laughs> going to be um, warmer. Uh, because those fibers are all going in different directions, there's more air in the yarn. There's more air in this yarn than there is in this one. And so therefore it's more insulative than this one. 
Uh, but really, it's all about personal preference. Generally, when you think um, woolen spun yarns, you're thinking color work, like your Jameson and Smiths, and all of those like big color work names. Um, whereas worsted spun yarns, you know, you're thinking sock yarn, you're thinking more durable. Um, lots of times people prefer worsted spun yarns for cable, cabling because that very, um, that tighter yarn circumference, the smoother yarn is going to um, make those cables pop a little bit more. Um, because the worsted spun yarns are by definition a bit stronger than the woolen spun yarns and again this is not universal like this is overall right like there are some woolen spun yarns that are stronger than some worsted spun yarns uh, but typically these are going to be stronger than these are you're more often going to see worsted spun yarns for socks and things that require a lot of abrasion or they're going to receive a lot of abrasion but that doesn't mean you can't use a woolen spun yarn. Um, it's just the more typical application for a worsted spun. So I just chose these both because these are both um, Brooklyn Tweed. And I could, you know, so you could, they're both the same weight. Um, but you can definitely, I, I think you can definitely see yeah. <laughs> the difference in surface texture. Now these are also different fibers. The Peary is a Merino and the Loft is a Columbia Tar Heat. So their differences are not exclusive to the fact that they are worsted versus woolen spun. Um, this also has a lot more plies than this one does. And that is often the case, I think, when you look at worsted versus woolen spun. Um, worsted spun yarns are more likely to have more plies um, than woolen spuns. It's not a universal truth, but there you go. <laughs> so then let's talk about the woolen spun yarns themselves. So the first one I'm going to talk about is Shetland, which is a yarn produced by Harrisville Designs. Um, they are a, an American mill in New Hampshire. They're actually a historic mill that's been producing yarn um, on and off since the late 1700s. Um, let's see. So they make both, they make lots of different yarns, but this specific like vein, um, they have a Shetland, which is a fingering weight, and the Highland, which is the worsted weight. Um, and I don't have anything to show you made of the Highland, but it's essentially the same, just in the heavier weight. Uh, this is put up in 50 gram skeins or half pound cones. So both the um, finger weight and the worsted weight are available. I'm sorry, I think the worsted weight is in 100 gram put up, but they're both available in skeins and cones. And the only difference is, from what I understand, usually if the, a yarn is offered in both of those options, um, the skeins have just been washed one more time, so they have more of a bloom and they're a little bit softer than the cone yarns, which are primarily produced for weavers. Uh, but lots of times, I'm not, I can't remember what the breakdown is on the Harrisville um, cone versus skein, but usually there is a price advantage to buying it in the cone. Uh, but you just want to be very aware that if you're doing that, you definitely want to wash and block your swatch uh, to get good gauge because you will have significant bloom usually on those yarns. And also, if you're using both in a, in a project, so like if you're using a cone yarn, for example, say you bought a cone yarn for the primary color of the sweater and you bought a skein for the accent color, um, be aware that that's going to affect how that looks pre versus post wash. Um, and so you may want to consider skeining it off and washing it. I wouldn't probably, but <laughs> that is an option for you if that's something that concerns you. Um, this yarn is $9.20 grand, excuse me, $9.20 for a 50 gram skein. Um, and it is available. You can purchase a color card from um, Harrisville and it is available in a really great range of colors. So I'm not sure what the price of the color card is, but you can find it on their website. Um, but I really like it. Um, it's a nice lightweight yarn. It is a two ply. It is dyed in the wool because it's um, woolen spun. So you have usually in even, you know, even what we would consider solid colors, there's a nice heathered look to it. Um, not heavily so that it's distracting, but especially for the knitter as you're working on something, it's nice to have a little color variation, right? Like it's just a pleasant thing to be able to look at, uh, but yet it reads as a solid from a distance. So I really like their yarn quite a lot. Um, I have knit 
a sweater with it. This is the Thrape Wear, which is by Isol de Teague. I knit this last fall. Um, so it's probably gotten, I don't know, 10 to a dozen wears. Now it is a short sleeve sweater, so I don't have like sweater on sweater abrasion, um, but I have not deep pilled this sweater. I don't, I, I don't think I have anyway. And you can see it's wearing really well. And this is certainly not um, like a bulletproof gauge either. Like this is a very typical, I think it's five and a half, maybe six inches to the, excuse me, five and a half to six stitches to the inch, which is a pretty standard fingering weight gauge. Um, and, and it's really, it has so far held up really nicely. Um, of course, woolen spun yarns are known to be great for color work. Um, their bloom and their slight halo. Now this one doesn't have a lot of halo. I don't think I'll be able to even let you see. Yeah, it's got a little bit of fuzziness to it. But it doesn't have, for example, like a mohair content, which some things like Peace Fleece and Beaverside have that give it a more um, substantial halo. So, But most people actually prefer that, like that kind of in-between. Um, what are they saying? Oh, so it's it's really great for color work. Of course, it's going to be great for regular um, stocking it. And I would certainly feel comfortable doing st um, textures with it as well. It may not highlight a cable pattern as like distinctly as a worsted spun yarn, um, but I certainly wouldn't hesitate to use it either. One of the nice things about having that tiny bit of halo, when you are doing cables, lots of times you get like really tiny little gaps, um, especially if you're doing larger like six stitch cables. Um, and so woolen spuns kind of, for me, help to kind of fill that in. They also help a cabled sweater, which usually, which always takes more yarn to not be quite so heavy. I mean, a cabled weight, excuse me, a cabled cotton sweater is gonna weigh a gajillion pounds. And also just don't do that to your hands. <laughs> but a woolen spun will be lighter overall usually. Um, for example, you know, you get 434 yards out of 100 grams versus often you get 400 yards um, on like your superwash merinos. Um, so it just, you know, those little things at those few yards add up, I think, over a large project. And that might be because I am a fat woman. And so my sweaters naturally are going to take more yarn. So that difference in weight becomes a larger factor for me than it would be for a small person. Um, but the great thing about woolen spun yarns is because they lock into each other a little bit more than your worsted spun ones. Because of that, because of the way they are spun, because of the way they are applied, they tend, the stitches tend to kind of lock together more. And I don't mean that they fold, don't forget, but they want to hold on to each other. They have an affinity towards each other. And so they are less likely for me um, to have to experience stretch like overstretch or being stretched out That's my experience anyway So um, I really like Harrisville. It's not super wash merino like it's not I Would have no problem making a shawl out of it. I probably wouldn't make a hat out of it because I am I don't have bangs. So when a hat I wear a hat it rubs against my forehead all day um, so I probably wouldn't make a hat out of it, but I really love it. I think it's durable. I think it's got a lot of good uses. So for example, comparing the Shetland and the Loft, um, they are a great example of how woolen spun yarns same, spun by the same company um, can have such different characteristics. Um, now they do have different fiber contents. The so Shetland um, is a, an Australian New Zealand wool and the Loft is a Columbia Tar Heel wool. Um, so, and it does not specifically give the breed um, information for the Shetland. Um, but I believe if I were like a proficient spinner, I would do a wraps, or excuse me, a twist um, per inch comparison. But I'm not. But anyway, <laughs> specifically, it does say on um, Harrisville's website that the Shetland um, is spun more tightly on the spinning frame. So it had, it is. It is produced with an eye towards um, longer, more durable wear. Um, and so, and I definitely can sense that. Now, they're also very different softness levels. 
you know what? I shouldn't say that they're very different. They are different softness levels. I, for example, could and have made a hat out of the shelter, which is the worsted weight. Um, and I would not hesitate to do so again. I would not, for example, though, make a hat out of the Shetland or the Highland. Um, now that's probably in part because I do not have bangs. So when a hat is on my head, it is rubbing against my forehead the whole day. Um, so that's a difference in experience, but there is a difference in softness. The Shetland, especially in the cone version, can feel a little bit crunchy, um, but it definitely softens quite a bit with, um, with wash. And with, of course, just knitting it, you're adding some oils into it as well. But, I mean, they're great. They're both great yarns. You may not use them for the same things. Um, I do not have a garment made with Lofter Shelter. I have fairly recently made a garment with Quarry, um, which is their bulky weight one, but it's definitely um, a little bit more um, touchy than, <laughs> than the, um, the Shetland or the Highland would be in terms of its wear. Uh, it's just, it's a much looser spun yarn. It's almost a single ply um, and it still is a shorter, uh, fiber length than, you know, like a lopi or something like that. That's your traditional one that's not spun. Um, but I like both of them. I just wouldn't use them necessarily for the same things. So there's that. So then also spun by Harrisville are the series of Brooklyn Tweed Yarns, Loft, Shelter, and Quarry. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they are a different wool content. They are a Columbia Tarhi excuse me, a Columbia Tarhi, and they just have a much cloudier feel to them. Um, they are less durable than the other, but they certainly have other great qualities and characteristics. One being that they are wonderfully soft and fun to knit with because they're so spongy. I think that's what the difference is. They feel very spongy. Now, in terms of color cards, this is not a Brooklyn, the loft color card. I apologize. I do have one. I just couldn't put my, lay, my hands on it, uh, but this is the same style. So this is the Peary one, but I don't, uh, their color card is really like, it's good in that it is actually pieces of the yarn, but it's not my favorite. <laughs> it's really tiny little samples that are adhered to the backing. Um, so for example, you cannot try to lay two colors next to each other. Um, which you can with other color cards. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and at least there, it is available. So I have knit, I have not knit a sweater with the loft or the shelter. I have knit a sweater with the, the, um, the quarry, which is the bulky one. Um, and it's definitely very light and soft and fun and cloudy and spongy. It does not wear as well. It's definitely more prone to pilling. Um, I, for example, probably would not knit a long sleeve sweater with it. Um, now it is less spun even than the loft and the shelter, the quarry is. It's very much like a lopy um, spin or ply structure. Not ply structure. It's very barely plied. Um, but it's a shorter staple length wool. And so it's just a little bit, it's just less sturdy just by the nature of what it is. It is however beautiful and soft and squishy and wonderful. Um, but I really love their yarns. They look great in color and texture, um, garter stitch, multiples. This is the Guernsey wrap, which is um, a pattern specifically made for loft or shelter. Um, this is, um, Oh, I should have looked. <laughs> it's a Gudrun Johnston pattern, though. It's her hap. It's pretty easy to tell which one it is. Um, so they have, and they have a fairly good color range as well. And they are always adding new colors, which is really great. Um, so they're a wonderful option as well. Do they have a lot of difference between um, it in the skein versus post-wash? No, there is not a lot of difference. Um, I always wash and... I say block, but I just lay them flat if it's a garment. But I do always wash uh, my swatches just in case. Uh, but this one, there's probably not going to be any difference between pre and post gauge. Um, but don't knit a sweater on that, y'all. Um, but anyway, I love it. And it's great for accessories, especially because they are so lightweight. This is a very big hap. Um, but it, when you wear it on your shoulders, it feels 
you don't even notice it, yet it is wonderfully warm um, and very snuggly and cozy. So I really do enjoy um, that series of yarns, the Loft, the Shelter, and the Quarry. So then also in the Wool and Spun family, speaking about Loft and those yarns. This is kind of like another natural comparison to those two. Um, so this is Wisconsin Wool and Spun. It's available from Bartlett Yarns. They do have a more limited color palette than the other, um, than the Harrisville um, Shetland and the Brooklyn Tweed Loft, those series. Uh, but they still have a great range. They have especially like a uh, excuse me. They have especially great range of grays, and I do feel like I've liked every color that I've seen from them. It's just that they have slightly fewer colors available. Uh, but it's that said, an excellent value. Um, at the time of this, the 100 gram skeins of the Wisconsin Woolen Spun and the Fingering White Yarn were $18 a skein, and that's 450 yards. Um, so again, we're talking about a price point that is very accessible in my opinion, obviously. Um, and I really do think it's a great yarn. Did I say Bartlett or Barrett? I really apologize. It is Barrett wool in case I said the wrong thing. Um, so it's Wisconsin wool and spun by Barrett wool. <laughs> And again, that's a 450 yard put up. It is really such a great yarn. It is one of the most exciting yarns I've seen to come out recently. And I really dig it. Um, I do have a garment knit with it. I would not hesitate. It's very soft. It's very uh, similar um, in feel to the loft. Uh, maybe slightly less cloudy and bouncy. It does have a tighter ply structure, um, but it is significantly stronger than the loft. You can give it a pretty good little tug and it'll stay intact. Um, and I have knit a sweater with it, so I do have that. This sweater I knit, I think this sweater is about a year old. So this is the Quaker gray colorway. And I have depilled it a few times, uh, but again, it is a long sleeve sweater on a very big lady. And so I'll show you the biggest wear sections and they, and I did not depill for you. Um, sorry, that's just like a loose fiber, <laughs> but it's really great. It is a great yarn. I really dig it. It has a good drape for this fluffy and bouncy as it is. Um, it's really pleasant to work with. Um, it washes up beautifully. I really dig it. Um, again, I don't have as much experience with it. I have not used it in color work, but I would certainly be happy to do so. Um, but it has a nice, it textures well. Um, the ribbing looks great. I just really like it. It's soft enough to feel very soft, yet it has body. Um, it doesn't feel rigid at all when you're wearing it. Like you don't, you know, it drapes really nicely. Um, and I really like it. I think it's a great yarn and I'm excited to see, um, how the brand evolves in the future. But so far I'm really happy with it. Um, so yeah, my direct comparison, the, the mo the closest of these yarns that I'm talking about today would be the loft. Um, and did I mention this is available in a worsted weight and a fingering weight at this time? So this is the closest comparison. Um, but I do think it's between the loft and the Harrisville in terms of um, wear a bit like sturdiness, long-term wear stuff. Um, but this is also soft enough that I would definitely need a hat with it. Um, I would have no, no problem with that as well. So it's a really great kind of in between those two places. If you are kind of a delicate flower, um, or you want to have something that you can wear next to skin. I probably would not wear my Harrisville sweater next to skin. Um, I mean, I wouldn't like freak out about it, but I tend to run hot and cold. So I think it would kind of be a little bit too much for me, but I would not hesitate to wear this or this next to skin, even in a sweater, but great for accessories, great for color work, um, great for sweaters, I recommend all three of them. But if you're looking for something that's next to skin, these two I would recommend over the Harrisville. Um, so yeah. Okay, so then we also have Bartlett Yarns. Um, Bartlett Yarns is out of Maine and they produce lots of different yarns. They produce 
um, a sport weight, which is what this is. They produce a worsted weight and they produce an iron weight. And I think they also produce rug wools. I'm almost 100% sure on that one. Um, but like the Harris Hill Shetland and Highland, they are available in both, excuse me, the sport weight is available in both skeins and cones. So the skein put up is 430 yards, and I think it's a four ounce skein versus 100, yeah. It's a four ounce skein versus 100 gram skein, so it's um, not, as easily to, not as easy to compare directly. Uh, but it's $12.10, so it's a very affordable yarn. So 430 yards for the skein, and then $17.50 for the, for the cone if I'm not mistaken. Um, let me just double check that one. Let's see. So yeah, $17.50 for the cone, 1,700 yards, and the cones are $48.40 at this time. Um, and they are both available, the cones and the skeins are available in the same color range. Now their color, um, their color card is a little bit lower tech, and it can be a little bit challenging to tell um, this is how Peace Fleece often did their new colors and things like that. Um, so it can be a little bit challenging to tell which color belongs to um, the color name because they're not labeled, but they are grouped by, for example, they have um, Fisherman, Solids, um, Acadian Tweeds, Glen Tweeds, Wranglees, Rangelees, whatever. And so it does limit their color palette down so that you can kind of differentiate. Okay, there's not a lot of you know, there's only three blues in this, and I think I can tell pretty much which ones are which on the website. So that is their color card, and you can get those um, at any of their shows, uh, and usually they'll just give you one with any purchase, and I'm sure that if you call them, you can purchase one. I just don't know what the process is for that. Um, so that's that. Usually when I buy them at a show, they don't come labeled. I don't know if purchasing them from the online site, if they come labeled, but they usually just come like that. Um, so if that's a thing that is a thing for you, FYI's. <laughs> the cones do come with a sticker on the inside of the cone that tells you what colorway it is um, and what weight it is and how many yards are on it. Um, but so there's that. But here I have knit several garments Okay, I've knit a few garments with their yarn. I just finished one, so I can't attest to that one. Uh, but this is a rather, this is the Carapino, and I apologize, I'm not sure off the top of my head who the designer is. Um, but I've had this sweater for, I don't know, at least three years, probably. Um, I did not wear it a lot, because I knitted it as a pullover, but I did eventually steek it and add buttons, and so I've worn it quite a bit since then. Um, and you can see that much like the um, Harrisville Shetland, it, uh, it has a great wear. Now this one is listed as a sport weight versus a fingering weight. Um, and and it, is, it is heavier, it is thicker um, than, the, the sh than the Shetland, than Harrisville Shetland, but you can kind of, you know, you can kind of use them for the same patterns. Um, but it is real. I really like this yarn. Um, again, the direct comparison is with the Shetland. It has, again, we have um, the colors are similar in terms of dyed in the wool. Um, there is less of a color range than the Shetland, but there are still, as you can see from the samples, a good number of colors. And I like their colors quite a bit. But it is a more limited palette than the Shetland specifically. Very true that with um, the cone versus the skein, you're gonna get a very different bloom effect. So um, you make sure, especially if it's a cone, that you're washing it before you measure for your gauge uh, because it is significantly different. It does plump up quite a bit. Um, it does also soften a bit, but I would not, it's not the softest yarn. It's very similar to the Shetland. I would wear it for a sweater any day of the week. I'd wear it for a shawl. I would not wear it for a hat for me personally. Um, if it doesn't have a mohair content, it's got something that's got a guard here in it because it has, it does have more of a halo or um, a texture than the Shetland does. Uh, you do get guard hairs if that's something that bothers you. Um, and that can, that can, if you are very sensitive, that can add to like the prickle factor of a yarn. Um, those guard hairs can be problematic for some folks. Um, but I, to be honest with you, I've never noticed it being any less soft or, or more problematic than the Shetland. Um, but again, I've not worn it next to skin in a, um, in a garment. But I really like it. I think it's a great yarn. 
Um, I do have it knit in a worsted weight garment as well. Um, I purchased the fisherman's weight, I think, um, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't think I've knit with anything with it. Or if I did, I've just forgotten. So this one definitely has gotten a lot of wear. This is the Stroker Cardigan by Isolde de Teague, because apparently I can't stop knitting her sweaters. Um, and you can see it definitely gets pilly. Well, it has pills. It doesn't get pilly though. Like it definitely has pills. This has been worn and I have not depilled it at all. See, I'm like trying to get them so you can see them and it's like, so you can see a little bit better. So it definitely does get a few pills, but it's not bad at all. And I never feel like when I'm pulling a few pills off that I'm like, oh gosh, am I going to hurt the yarn? It just feels... And the, um, I will say this, the worsted weight definitely has more of um, a halo than the sport weight. And I don't think, yeah, no, I didn't knit this at like a specifically a looser gauge or anything. I think it just has a hairier, more halo-y feel than the sport weight. So if you are, you know, more of a delicate flower, maybe try the sport out first and see how you feel about it. Um, one of the other things I do like about their yarns that maybe some people wouldn't like is that they do have a slight lanolin content in them. Um, and I enjoy knitting with yarns that have a little bit of lanolin in them. So I could not find on their website that their yarn specifically does have a mohair content to it, but, and it may not because the, the guard hairs do not have the shine that a mohair usually does. Like mohair usually has like a, almost like a sparkle to it, but there is definitely more of a guard hair in this. If, if it's not mohair, there's a, um, a fiber like a Shetland or, um, that's got more texture to it. So just something to be aware of if that's problematic to you. Um, I kind of dig it. And again, you can see this is one of their yarns that ha is dyed in the wool and it's brown, but it has a lot of great visual texture. It's got rust in it, it's got blue in it, it's got some creams in it, and it's really just really fun to knit with and beautiful in the skein as well. So that is Bartlett Yarns. So we also have Peace Fleece. They are also spun by Harrisville, so they're another woolen spun. They do have a mohair content, and the mohair content does vary from colorway to colorway. Uh, but you can see that they have a great, again, you see that dyed in the wool color texture. They're available in um, a worsted weight, which I think Ravelry terms as an Aran weight. It is a definitely a thicker worsted weight. And they are also available in what they call a sport slash DK weight. Um, they have limited, more limited colors in the Sport DK than they do in the Worsted. Um, but I highly recommend both of them. I really enjoy Peace Fleece. They are another yarn that is a fairly economical price point. Um, and they are actually, I think, that's my, I can't remember if I got a Green Mountain Spinnery catalog or a Peace Fleece catalog first. But they are definitely amongst my first yarns. Um, that I can remember getting as when I was in college. So it was very exciting. Um, <laughs> for example, the piece fleece in the worsted weight skein is 200 yards for a four ounce skein and it is $12.60. Um, and then again, the DK is something somewhat color, or excuse me, comparable in price. I really like their yarn. It has mohair if that bothers you, that's problematic. It wears really well. This, now I have not worn this sweater a lot. I will be completely frank. Um, I need to go ahead and make it longer. Um, it's a little bit, or make it shorter and wear it over dresses. Maybe I should just try it over dresses now and see what I think. Um, but it's, it wears really well. It's a nice yarn. This, um, I have worn quite a lot. I've never depilled it and I've probably worn it I, bought, I also per made this one right before um, Rhinebeck this last year. So this is the GG. Um, and it's, I've worn it quite a lot and it's very, and again, it's a short sleeve, so it's going to have less pilling for me than a long sleeve sweater would, uh, but it's doing really well. And I don't think I've, I mean, maybe I've depilled it once, but not much. I really like it though. Oh, I love Peace Fleece. They're just like super fun and crunchy and hippie. 
and like they have a nostalgic factor to me, which I really appreciate. Um, also, if you are in a place where you are really putting a stretch for your yarn budget, um, they do have a bulk buying club option. So if, and I apologize, I, I haven't looked at their website recently, but I believe that it's still in place. Um, that if you have, specifically, I think it was put in place for people who were making soakers, like the, the um, washable diaper covers. Um, so you could go in with a bunch of folks and purchase yarn to make soakers with, but they do, from what I understand, have a buying club, which is kind of like a wholesale light, where if you purchase a minimum order, you get a certain percentage off. Um, so that's something to be aware of if you do have other knitters that you you know feel comfortable purchasing with and price is a concern that is an option as far as i know that's still available and boy it is it's nice because <laughs> it's already an affordable yarn and that just makes it a little bit easier uh, but there again availability is kind of is they have i think a greater distribution than um some other folks but they're still kind of harder to find. Uh, again, a lot of people don't want a woolen spun yarn. They don't want a quote unquote scratchy yarn. Um, so they, they suffer, I think, for that. But their, their, scar, your, excuse me, their yarn looks great in a skein um, and they have a great color palette. Uh, not as extensive as Shetland Highland, certainly. Some of their colors are a little bit not to my taste. Um, and so, for example, if I were going to knit a color work um, garment or something like that with them, I might be challenged to find enough colors to, to work with, to put into one. But certainly you can work with, you know, another yarn in addition to them. But they do have some really great options. Obviously, this is a great, they have a great blue. They have this wonderful Shaplova red. Now that I say that, I'm not sure. Um they you know they have a lot of good options they just have some that are kind of like interesting misses in my opinion but that's just my taste so not everybody's so i recommend them certainly i've never done color work with the yarn but i would not hesitate to do so um, i recommend them though for great wearable garments that are going to hold up really well over time um I would not hesitate to do a texture with them. I might not do a cable, um, but I would be more likely to do a cable, for example, with this versus the Bartlett worsted spun or the Bartlett worsted weights, um, because they do have a halo, but it's a little bit less intense. Um, it really just does primarily come from the mohair content of the yarn. So that is piece fleece. So I'm gonna add this in awkwardly at the end. <laughs> uh, but it occurred to me as I was um, editing the video that I did not mention. Another thing that can be a little bit annoying about piece fleece is that oftentimes woolen spun yarns, the plies themselves um, have very little twist in them. And so the strength of the yarn often comes in the, the plying process. And so the, lo the more twist you have in the final yarn, the more the more twist you put into the plying process, it's going to strengthen the yarn. Okay. So sometimes woolen spun yarns, um, when you do like that test where you hold the yarn back on itself to see if it'll twist, it will test as overspun. Um, so like when you hold the yarn, it'll twist back up on itself. And Peace Fleece does often do that. Now, some people can get frustrated by that. I, I mean, I find it to be a very minor annoyance, uh, but it is something to be aware of that that does annoy some people so just so you're aware another yarn that does that that's not woolen spun is like blue blue moon fiber arts their socks that rock it does that um but the great thing about it is while it, it might be mildly annoying as you're knitting um and again not the actual process of knitting but the the <laughs> the space between your knitting and the skein of yarn sometimes if you pull off too much yarn it can kind of get want to get twisted up on itself um, but it does add strength to the final yarn it allows more space or excuse me it allows less space for fibers to escape from the yarn um, so it will oftentimes create a slightly smoother yarn but more importantly it will create a more durable yarn that is more uh, resistant to abrasion so I just thought I would throw that in as well so then last but not least is beaver slide dry goods um, they are a company out of Montana they do they do their spinning in Canada from what I understand 
um, but it is a traditional mule spun mill. Um, so it is an older mill that is still doing this kind of work. Um, their put-ups are available in, they call this one two-ply sport, I think. Maybe two-ply sport sock. Um, yeah. So it's 80%. This, they're another one where their colors vary content. So some of their colors are an 80-20 mohair merino. Some of them are a 90-10. Um, but I believe that they all do have some mohair content. And I didn't mention this when I was talking about um, the uh, uh, piece fleece, but traditionally mohair has been added for strength, especially in woolen spun yarns. They tend to have less twist um, in the single, more twist in the ply, but the mohair was added to give it a little bit more strength because uh, of course mohair, mohair fibers are very long and strong. Um, so that's why you see mohair content in a lot of woolen spun yarns. I didn't mention that earlier. Uh, but this put up is four ounces, 458 yards. And I believe, and their prices do vary a little bit by color too. Uh, but th this, for example, is $15.95. And I believe that that's a pretty standard price. Um, so it's another one that has a really great put up for the price. Um, I have knit three garments with their yarn. Um, this is a Hohi Locatelli sweater, the Granito. This is the Emily sweater. And I apologize, I can't think of the designer off the top of my head. Um, I do prefer their yarn knit at a tighter gauge. I think it increases its wearability. Um, not, um, and that's to my taste. I actually tend to like a little bit more structure I've found in my sweaters. So the sweater, I think this yarn lends itself to um, like a granito or like a larger, like more um, positive ease, more drape in the yarn. I do think this yarn really does lend itself to that. And I have actually knit, a, there's another sweater that I don't have here, um, but it was like an open front, longer cardigan. Their yarn has a great drape and softness, which really lends itself to that. But I have found that I personally don't like that. I like a little bit more structure in my knitwear than that. And so I prefer their yarns knit at a slightly tighter gauge. Um, this is really not that much tighter, but because it has more structure in it, it has a set in sleeve, it has a button band, it has a seamed shoulder. It's just a little bit more it's a little bit more frame for the softness of the yarn. Um, but again, that's my preference. This sweater is rather old. I think it's six years old, I think is what I figured out. Um, and it wears, it's been wearing really well. Now I don't wear this sweater all the time. It is like a long, like an elbow length sleeve. Um, but you, you know, there's a little bit of pilling, but nothing at all extreme. Um, it is a steak sweater and the steak has had no problem in holding itself together. Um, and this was just a slip stitch crochet steak. This has not been machine reinforced. Let me double check before I lie to you. Yeah, no, it has not been machine reinforced. And you can see that it has held up really well over time. Um, I would certainly use it for this is a lace pattern. I wouldn't use it for maybe the mo. No, no, I would use it for anything. I would, <laughs> I would definitely use it for color work. Um, I'm currently doing a color work project with it. I don't have, um, I don't have the brown is not a beaver slide, but it's a very similar texture. Um, but I would definitely use it for color work. I would definitely use it in a garment. I would definitely use it as an accessory. I would use it in a shawl. I would use it in a hat. This is kind of on my line of hats. The fiber itself is actually quite soft because of the merino, um, but the mohair is a little bit niggly. Like it's a little bit prickly um, for me for a hat, but I would certainly wear it in a scarf or, or any sort of shawl or anything like that. It's just the pressure of a hat um, is, is Makes, makes it feel a little bit more prickly to me. So my only complaint about this yarn is that f I find it to be a little bit loosely plied. Now, that's, I think, a matter of personal taste, so I'm not in any way um, speaking poorly of the fiber itself. <clears throat> However, I have a bit of a problem when I'm knitting with it. Now this one, this one actually is, is, 
a little bit tighter. <laughs> and that is a newer skein. But I tend to, I have a tendency to, when I'm knitting with it, it's a two ply. I have a tendency to sometimes only catch one of the plies. Um, I have an orange sweater that I knit with their Swift Fox that is, and I don't know why I didn't realize when I was knitting with it that only catching one of those fibers is problematic. Um, now it has not created, it has not gotten any holes in it, but I'm just waiting. <laughs> because there's lots of places you hold it up to the light uh, because again, it's knit at a looser gauge. If I hold it up to the light, I can tell, <clears throat> excuse me, there's probably 20, 30 places in it where when I knit, I only caught one ply. Um, uh, so I, <laughs> every time I wear it, I'm kind of like holding my breath, like, yep, this is the time all those 25 places are gonna go once, but it hasn't gone. Um, and that sweater is older, I think, I think it's newer than the Emily. Um, but I haven't worn it as much because I'm always a little bit nervous about those plies. Um, but again, that, that could have... Because when I'm looking at it like this, I don't think, oh gosh, that's loosely plied. I think that could have everything to do with the fact that I might twist, untwist some of the plies, or excuse me, untwist it as I'm knitting. Like different people, the way they hold their yarn um, can twist or untwist a texture. Excuse me, twist or untwist a yarn as they're working with it, um, which can make that problematic. That said, the, the soft ply makes it a very soft yarn. Um, the merino, of course, helps that too, but it's a very soft yarn. Um, so, and I've, and they're great. They have great customer service. Nobody I have mentioned doesn't have great customer service. Um, I've met both the part, the Bartlett yarn folks and the, um, Harrisville yarn folks at, um, festivals. They're very personable, very enjoyable. Um, Peace Fleece I've only dealt with through the mail. I've never had an issue with them, but I have no reason to think that they aren't wonderful. Um, and of course, Susan B. Anderson's um, Barrett Wool Company. Of course, they're great. They're wonderful. So I don't think I mentioned, but Beaver Slide does offer both um, a worsted and a fisherman weight. I, I will be honest with you, I don't love their worsted weights. They start to feel... Um, Ropey is too strong of a word, but I do think that that can kind of happen in a lot of the worsted weight wool and spun yarns. I do think that they just perform better in um, in a fingering or a sport weight. Now that's not true of the Brooklyn Tweed or the Barrett Wool. Um, that different texture is like a totally different ball game. So even though those are wool and spun yarns, I kind of class them differently than these other fellas. Um, I don't know, how, again, I don't know enough about the science of the spinning to, to know why that that feels so different to me, but in use, I would put them in a different category pretty much. Um, but I do think that um, the, specifically, I, I have not knit a large project with the Highland, so I cannot say that for the Harrisville Designs Highland or Shetland. Highland. <sighs> but I have knit with the, um, the Peace Fleece, the Bartlett, and the Beaver Slide. I've knit with all of their, their, um, worsted weights and larger projects, and they are a little bit harder on the hands. They do feel slightly, um, just slightly more ropey than, um, a lot of, and that might just be because oftentimes they're just two or three plies. Maybe that's the difference um, versus a lot of the worsted spun yarns when you get into larger, like heavier weights are multiple plies. And then, okay, so here's the kind of final, I apologize, I don't have the skein of piece fleece, um, so I'll try not to leave her out um, when I talk about them all as a final goodbye. Um, <laughs> so these are the yarns I've talked about, Loft, and again, these are usually available, available in multiple weights, but I'm just gonna go ahead and say the ones that I have here so that I don't get as confused. Loft, um, that's by Brooklyn Tweed. Wisconsin Wool and Spun's Fingering Weight by Barrett Wool. Beaver Slide Dry Goods, Two Ply Sock by Beaver Slide Dry Goods. Um, Harrisville Designs, Shetland. Bartlett Yarns, Sport Weight. And then again, I had Peace Fleece out here as well in both the um, Sport DK and Worship Weight. I say sport slash DK, not comma DK. Um, so I, I pretty much recommend all these yarns. Um, and I pretty much recommend all of them for a lot of the same things. Um, I definitely recommend all of them for color work. If I were doing cables, 
I would probably choose Wisconsin Woolen Spun um, or the Harrisville's Shetland Highlands. Um, just because they have a little bit more, for example, has a little bit more strength than the Loft, has a little bit less halo than the Beaver Slide, the Peace Fleece, or the Bartlett. So that's why I would choose these two um, for cabling over the others. Um, I would not not do cabling in any of the others, but I would probably choose these two. Um, I would choose all of them for color work, choose all of them for regular texture. Um, yeah, I just highly recommend all of them. Um, I think they're all a great option. They definitely have a good range of price points, um, all the way from, what did I say, $12 for a four ounce to $16.75 for a 50 gram. Um, so there's a good range of prices available for you. Um, definitely softer, moving towards scratchier. And I don't want to use the word scratchy because it's so stereotypical, but I feel like it's shorthand for what you understand. Um, I don't in any way think that these are unpleasant to touch, but they have a sheepier feel to them. Um, have that more traditional wool feel than these super soft guys over here. Um, and again, the beaver slide is very soft, but if mohair bothers you, it's something to be aware of. Um, and again, I would put Peace Fleece probably right here in terms of like, this kind of feels like the softness progression <laughs> with Peace Fleece here. Um, but I highly recommend all of them. So yeah, I think these are all great yarns. I would not hesitate to use any of them again. Um, and I'm really glad that they're all available to us.